Hi, in today's lesson I'm going to talk a little about hand technique. We've got two basic hand techniques on the drum kit. We've got traditional technique where the hands are slightly different and we've got match grip where they're exactly the same. Now we're going to talk today all about match grip. Now match grip we've got um, three, three different positions that we can give names to. We've got German technique, French technique, and kind of halfway halfway between the two, some people call American technique. Now today I'm going to be talking mainly about German technique. Um, I find it's the easiest one to teach beginners, and it's it's the the best of best. Each each technique has got kind of ups and downs, and I find that the the German technique has got the the, the most kind of positives. So the German technique, we break it down into, into three different parts. We break it down into the wrist motion, the fulcrum, and the bounce of the drum. Now the wrist motion then, if we just put our hands by our sides, bring our hands up into this kind of position here, just nice and loose, so our, so our fingers are kind of flopping downwards. Okay, let's try that again. So just bring your hands up above your knees like this. Now this motion here, if you think of the way a baby waves, or the way that your, your wrist here is kind of designed to work, we, we move up and down in that motion there. Okay, now we can move side to side, but it's not quite as easy as just moving that motion. So that, that is there is exactly how we're going to use our wrist in German technique. So just put that, put your hands above your drum and just tap your fingers on the drum like that. That's going to help you get your wrists used to the idea of, of bending in this, this kind of way. Now the second part is what I spoke about, the fulcrum. Well fulcrum in, in, in drums normally is just talking about a pivot point. So what we do is we make a second pivot. So that's pivot point one. Okay, We can pivot, pivot our wrist from here. The second pivot point is going to be here. So we can pivot this stick here. But what we do to do that is I'm going to put my thumb on the side of the stick and wrap my finger around the stick in that position there. Now all of a sudden now look, I've got a, a point that the stick can move up and down. Now these three fingers, as far as the fulcrum is concerned, they're going to do nothing. They're going to stay out of the way. So here, if I put a pin through my thumbnail, it should go right through the middle of my thumb, through the middle of the stick, and then through between this knuckle and this knuckle of my, my first finger. And that's the first position there. Then what I do, the pads of the three fingers, so these parts here where your nails are, we're just going to place them lightly on the stick. And that's the motion. Now we don't want to be squeezing, we're not holding it tight, we're holding it loose enough so that I could just kind of slip the stick out of my hand, but tight enough so that it can't, it can't be dropped out. Now what we then do is that pivot there is helped control by these fingers. So these fingers help move the stick in this position. So if you hold a stick upside down, so obviously gravity's pulling this part down, and you'll see that these fingers can just move the stick up and down like that. So that's the that's the main part of 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 this fulcrum here. Okay, so first finger fulcrum. Like sometimes you'll see more advanced techniques or or drummers doing uh, other techniques where we may change to the second finger, and that will become our fulcrum or a sort of a triangle. So one, two, and three. Right, but today all we're talking about is that first finger being the pivot point. Now with German technique, the stick's going to be moving in that direction. And that's because our thumbnails are going to be facing across the drum at each other, so here to here. So if you just hold your sticks down by your sides, bring your sticks up, similar to we did when we when we were using our loose hands, then your thumbs should be facing each other, your palms should be facing straight to the floor, and we get this kind of angle in the middle of the of the drum. So, part one, bendy wrist. Part two, fulcrum, fingers using being used to move the stick. Now, uh, I'm going to jump in one thing here, right? When I first people teach people this technique, what we normally find is they try and just use lots of fingers. So if I hold my, if I hold my stick really tight, it's kind of like the fingers are doing this motion here. We don't want that, right? It's a tiny amount of finger motion, which causes a lot of movement of the stick. Now, the third part of, of this technique is going to be um, using the, the rebound, or the bounce on the snare drum. We've got a tensioned head here, so if we drop something on it, it's going to bounce back up. So with a stick, See if I can catch this. If I drop it, it bounces straight back up. Now it never bounces straight back to the same height, but it bounces probably about here. But what we're going to do now is if you imagine that was a ball on the end of there, and I'm bouncing it, I want to try and get the stick to bounce back up to, to pretty much where it came from. So if I'm throwing the stick from here, it's probably going to bounce to about here. And I'm just going to put it up that last little bit. So we get this motion here. Now to accomplish this, I'm going to start using all three of those, those different pivot points. So 
my wrist going to bend slightly, my fingers are going to move slightly, and I'm going to use the rebound of that head. And I'm trying to get the stick to bounce back up every time. Now, what a lot of people do when they first try and do this is this. And what's happening here is my fingers are stopping the stick come back up. So I throw the stick down, it bounces off the head, or oh, my fingers have stopped it. So my fingers on the way back up actually just kind of follow the stick. So they just sort of open with the stick like that as if they're velcroed to it. So we get this full motion. Now if you imagine you put a coffee cup in the middle of your drum and it stained it, we're aiming for that sort of size area in the middle of the drum. So we've got to have room for both sticks to hit in that same sort of area. Finally, I'm going to show you a couple of exercises to help practice this technique. Simplest one, eight with the right hand, eight with the left hand. Um, then we're going to do what's called double stops, which is both hands hitting exactly the same time. So eight with the right hand, eight with the left hand, and eight double stops. I'll show you that now. So the idea of playing eight notes, it could be 18 notes, it could be 800 notes, okay? But we're just going to do a number of notes to the right, a number of notes to the left, a number together. Um, the next step would be, would be instead of practicing one-handed parts, we'd be practicing two-handed parts. So we'd change to a single stroke roll. So just right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, and we'll keep that going for a while. So we'll try um, eight with the right, eight with the left, then 16th notes for the hands. And then finally, I try and put some dynamics in there. So I may do crescendo. So I'll do, um, I'll just crescendo each one of those sections. And the same with D crescendos. And that's the German technique. So the German technique um, can be used exclusive, exclusively. Um, lots of famous drummers use just German technique. Um, equally, lots of drummers like to learn more than one technique. So if this doesn't really work for you, um, have a look at French technique. Have a look at German. Uh, have a look at uh, American technique. Sorry. Uh, maybe even look at traditional technique. So that's the end of that lesson. Um, I'll be back with more technique lessons soon. Thank you very much.